Clint, you know, you were not at the Truck Camper Rally last weekend, so... I'm going to ask you the trivia question that we had on Trivia Night. You ready? Uh, sh- sure. <laughs> Lean in. So. Oh, we've been recording. We, oh, he starts at the beginning. The secret is out. Sneak we attack. have Gordon and Angela from Truck Camper Magazine here Where? this week. Welcome. Welcome. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Guys. So, I, I know everybody else, but Clint may know this. What percentage of the market out there actually buys a truck camper? Oh, of the RV market? Of the RV market oh, buys a truck I, camper. I, I, All right, can y'all guess out multiple there? Multiple choice. Yeah. We had 3%, uh, 8%, 11%. 11% or 14%. I, I want to say 3 or 8 Let's go with 8 8%. I don't remember the answer. Three. It was three. Three See, percent. I wanted to say three. I three I percent. But I don't know. There's a lot to talk about here. And uh, we have Truck Camper Magazine uh, folks here, Gordon and Angela, hello, who've hello. published it for 16 years. So oh uh, right. we're going to just That don't was also go away. a trivia question. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I was it was. Right. It was. How many years? 16. We just finished up a tiny trailer rally and a truck camper rally. We're going to talk about... Just fun facts that you probably don't know. So stick with us. And Clint, why don't you start us off? Welcome to the RV Small Talk Podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go right along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. I'm PJ. And I have a wrinkly shirt. (laughs) Oh, well, I think we can be okay with that, Lindsay. (laughs) We'd be all right. There's not much I can do about it now. (laughs) I am so distracted by this cat. Cat, no, that's a real cactus. That's okay. It's a real cat. (laughs) Cat We have a... We, we have a cat with us because Gordon and Angela are traveling in a truck camper. Go figure. And they have a cat that we had never met, so he came into podcast with us. Cosmo. We, we named him Cosmo. Cosmo, we call him our CEO, and uh, he travels with us everywhere. He's just so much fun. And um, anyone out there who thinks that maybe they can't bring their cat with them when they go RVing, let me tell you, you absolutely can. Okay, yeah, I, I have let's a just about that let's too. just start out talking about cats. Okay, <laughs> right, right. let's just Why take not? a left. My I, cats always sing the song of their people when they're in a vehicle, and it's not a pretty song. It's not. It, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's very lowly, very angsty. Can you please imitate it for us? Uh, no, not at the moment. <laughs> but maybe I'll record it and just patch it in. So yeah. So does Cosmo sing the song of his people? Of thinking, you know, any minute is the end of the universe. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. the first month we traveled with Cosmo, he would meow like meow, yeah. like, like we were we were hurting him. It's like yeah. the song of his people. And just to be clear. He, and oh, I just it was tough. nobody knows kind of song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, English. All right, here you go ahead. So anyway, we get uh, we go from Florida all the way up to Maine with this meow. Oh, and we're just like, oh my gosh, is this going to be Aww. our truck camping cat? <laughs> we feel so uh, sorry for him. But then right about, we hit the Canadian border and he's just like, uh, oh, okay, this, just, is, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. I like yes. it. Yes. <laughs> so it only took about a thousand miles. It's the Canadian it's people. Better. And then he's he's just kind of, I can get him. he's just Oh, he's of, good. Well, I think he wants to show everyone Cosmo. If you're if you are able to check out this episode of the podcast on video, Cosmo's on the screen right now. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So go over to RV Small well, Talk Cosmo's, on YouTube and check yeah. out Cosmo. So the you, other trick that we did, if mm-hmm. people are watching this on video, is he wears this jacket and it sort of works like a thunder shirt with dogs in that. It mm. wraps around him and it's a hug. Kind, of, kind of holds him tight, mm-hmm. and that really helps to calm him down. Um, so that was a huge part of helping him adapt to the camper and to traveling. And it also is good in that um, when we go from the truck to the camper, he we have our ability, if he decides to dash, to grab him very quickly. And he also has a leash. He doesn't like to walk on the leash, but he, he, he tolerates it. And it makes it so we feel it's a lot safer. Sure. Especially when tractor trailers are nearby because he hears that like whoosh, right. the tractor trailer. Right. Mm-hmm. He, the brakes. He just... He, he jumps. jumps like, oh, oh so my that, gosh. That big machine just hissed at me. That's right. Really loud and scary like. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it sounds like he's scared like almost all the time. He's a scaredy cat for sure. But, but is he like chill in between? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he sleeps most of the time when we're traveling. So or he's, he's watching the birds or yeah. the people walking by. So I would think that if you're traveling with a cat, my thought is you crack open the door and just like at your house, they dart out. 
of the camper. He has. Another thing with the red jacket is it slows him down. And for some reason, that turns off the I need to get out of here mode. And he just he settles down and he's fine. This is also reflective so that if we um, if he got out at night, we we'd be able to spot it a lot easier. So before you open the door to your truck camper, like every single time you like, where's Cosmo? Well, and he, make sure he he's... travels with us in the truck. Right. And then he travels and he's with... So we always know where he is. Right, but, but where right. in the truck camper, like, it, make sure he's not right behind you. So if you open the right. door to go outside, he's not going to bolt. Yeah, it's yeah. always this kind of like, where's Cosmo? Usually he's sitting in the dinette or up on the bed and we just walk out and in, but... But if we leave the camper, we put the jacket on him. We don't... That way we know he cannot run very fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We know, Slow him down. Well, you know, it sounds like you worry about all the times he gets nervous, but Cosmo, being your cat, I bet has a charmed life. <laughs> Lots of constant yes. attention. It's not too bad. He's, which is worth the stress of traveling. We should all be so lucky to come back as a cat and get to travel. It'd be fun. Right. Yeah. Except for when it's not, because you're a cat. Yeah, except for when... <laughs> okay, you got me there. <laughs> right. Hey, what are we talking about? Truck campers? Uh, yeah, I think that... Um, cat campers. We, we should talk about how a lot of folks, they look at truck campers and they go, what, why? Why would anybody Just want why? that? Um, it's small. They're They're a little bit more expensive than basically anything else oh, in the they, RV world. They are the most expensive square footage right. of any RV out there. And the, I mean, that's taking out the yeah, $2 million motorhomes. Right. The but, real outliers. But yeah, <laughs> the, the outrageous ones. So why would anyone, I'm saying this as someone who obviously knows the answer, but why would anybody want this? It makes no sense. And that's a question oh, we get all oh, the time here. Oh, People oh, see them and they're like, that's neat, but why? Yeah. Well, I think... There's, I tell people there's two reasons to buy a truck camper. And in my head, there's only two. And isn't that crazy? Hmm. I'm, I'm getting this weird look. I'm interested in your No, answer. I've heard this like every day since I was 12. Yeah, so it makes sense to you. <laughs> you so know. two reasons to buy a truck camper. Yeah, so one reason is because you want to tow something, mm-hmm. you know? And tons of fishermen and people who have a boat, a ski do or... A helicopter. S- We've seen that guy too. Yes. Uh, yeah. He wants to tow they a tow helicopter. They tow their plane or uh, yeah, you know, their glider or uh, motorcycle trailers. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything you want to tow... You need a truck camper so that you have both things. A barbecue rig, a ton of barbecue right. com- competitors, competitions yeah. have truck Fi- campers. Competitive fisher, fishermen. Yeah. Bass, fisher bass fisher people. Fisher people. People who fish. <laughs> all of those okay. things fisher people. <laughs> fisher people. I like Fisher uh, Price all grown up. Uh, yeah. Fisher people. <laughs> I think we could hear you think just then a little bit. That was kind of fun. <laughs> I have a headache. But then the other reason is just the opposite. There's people who just say, I, I hate towing things. I want to fit in one parking space. I like to go downtown to the museums. Or I'm just scared to death to have something behind me mm-hmm. and be in traffic mm-hmm. or not be in traffic or hop a curb or all those reasons. If it's on your truck, it's just like driving your truck. That's right. But how is that any different than like a little van or a little class whatever it's not because they're not towing anything that's and they right. can also tow something well the one kicker on that so why is would that you, you choose get, a truck camper yeah, that? you get the functionality Good of Good do point. you want to tow or you do not want to tow but you also can separate from your camper and have a true runabout vehicle true. as well so so it's so it's kind of it's kind of PJ's point is a really great lead into, hey, let me think about this. But then you add the, the extra functionality because truck campers are so modular. You get to make your camping experience what you want, including you don't have to have a separate runabout vehicle. Mm-hmm. If you would need to go into town, you don't have to break camp and, and un. But you don't un- either if you have a trailer. Well, but holding to your point of I don't want to tow something. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so, so it's so, all the things. Right. Right. Is it yeah. like your 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 line of conversation is a perfect starting point, and then yeah. exactly the how's this different than a class B? Well, you don't have to pack up your camp just to run into That's, Walmart. Oh, good point. So we surveyed our readers for uh-huh. the first about twelve or thirteen years about why they go truck camping. <laughs> why um, are you supporting us? Well, <laughs> it, it, the reason we why did that survey was because we want to make sure we're producing content towards where their interests sorry, and we better understand it. Um, so the, the three answers were they want to go anywhere, mm-hmm. they want to camp anywhere, and they want to tow anything. 
consistently survey after survey after survey to the point where we made that our motto if you look mm-hmm. at trucking for magazine those that is the go anywhere campaign or tow anything so you're right that you can tow with other types of rvs absolutely but when you look at a a, a, du- a dually especially if it's a heavy uh thing that you're towing a diesel dually truck nothing is going to tow in the rv world better than a dually diesel truck there isn't a van a class B or mm-hmm. even a class A that has that kind of versatility and capability. And when you right. integrate torque lift into the equation, um, they have now the solutions to be able to tow bigger and heavier things better and safer. Um, obviously go anywhere. I mean, we have off-road and off-grade capabilities, not only because of the four-wheel drive truck. The clearance, the high clearance. We have that and the high clearance, but we also have larger holding tanks. We have bigger battery banks. We have more solar. So pound for pound, foot for foot, go anywhere is, is taken care of. And then, of course, camping anywhere. Once you get there, those holding tanks and those solar panels really kick in. And you can stay 10 days sometimes, maybe longer in a truck camper and be super comfortable. But that's a niche. We just described a really narrow, yes, you did. evidently 3% of the market. <laughs> right. right. I don't believe in that. <laughs> I think that those numbers aren't counted accurately for reasons that are beyond this podcast. But um, yeah, I was wondering how they got that number anyway, because you told me because truck campers aren't registered, then they can't really. That's it's part hard of to it. count. That's them. part of it. We part can. Of it. Yeah. You guys can estimate how many are built. Yes. But you can't really estimate what gets bought or registered because they don't register them. Yeah, I tell people it's like buying a shirt at Sears. You just buy it. It's yours. You can sell it to your next door neighbor for a dollar. Nobody cares. No <laughs> licensing, no registration in most states. In most states. There are some that do, but they are few and far between. Yeah. But, you know, for those people who are still with us and haven't said, I don't care about truck campers. I'm out. If you're still here, I think the biggest question would be the truck camper. It's tiny. It's minuscule. What's possibly going to be in there? Mm -hmm. How can you possibly live in that? It'd be like walking into a very small walk-in closet where you walk in, turn around and walk out. That's the perception. That is the perception and that it's decorated like your grandpa's living room in the 80s and um, yes. I was corrected by some of the people at our truck camper rally. They're like, well, I like the 80s. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like right, but yeah. most people didn't. <laughs> so or don't anymore. Right. So I don't know. That's the biggest myth, I think, about truck campers. They're so tiny and that they are dated on the inside. Mm-hmm. I could take that if you want. I mean, first of all, I, Ready, I, set, go. I tell people truck campers are the Jeep of RVs. And what no, I Jeeps mean, are cool. Yeah, exactly. They were, they were in the Jeeps 80s, too. Jeeps are cool. Right. They were in the 80s, too. That's true. Too. Well, I don't That's mean, true. But there is a coolness factor to that statement, right? Mm-hmm. The whole idea of the Jeep brand it, being associated with truck campers is sort of foreign, but it fits in that we go anywhere, we camp where we tow anything, we do, we're active. Mm-hmm. This is not a RV that you go necessarily to a campground and you hang Sit out for a week. Park. This yeah. is a traveling, exploring, skiing. Uh, this is an active outdoor lifestyle product. So um, people tend to find truck campers because there's something they really want to do, something they want to tow, um, something uh, they, they want to go to Alaska and they know that they need the four wheel drive mm-hmm. and the capabilities of a mm-hmm. truck. Um, I mean, it's not just something that you, people don't wander onto a lot and go, I don't know, maybe a travel trailer, maybe a fifth wheel, maybe a truck. That doesn't happen. They've mm-hmm. usually figured out that there's that part of the versatility of the product is something they need. And this is how it's always been. If you look back at my history with truck campers, what I've always seen is it's always been the rancher, the fisherman, the 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 rodeo clown, the rodeo professionals. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's always been the active go do things. It's kind of a tool. Uh, absolutely. It, it, is, it yeah. is part of your gear. But you know what? I think that's mostly true. But let's talk about the extreme luxury side of truck mm-hmm. campers, because that's out there, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, describe for me what a luxury truck camper looks like. Well, uh, some of them have one, two, and even three slide outs for three one. Three slide outs on a truck camper. Fireplaces, <laughs> heated yeah. floors. Clothes washing machines. Washing machines, <laughs> big screen TVs, island kitchens. They're little fifth wheels, basically. Sofas mm-hmm. and 
recliners. I know. King yeah. beds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the part that was, I mean, a lot of many years ago um, when the triple slides came out, a lot of folks in the industry, myself included, said, that's not a truck. That's what is that? It's and too much. The manufacturer <laughs> who, who came out with them um, said, you don't understand. We're not going after the truck camper market. We're going after people in a fifth wheel who want to downsize, who want a simpler way to travel, who don't want to tow anymore, who don't want that much to maintain. There were a lot of people like that at the rally with Lance 1172s. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think there were five or six of them who had who, been, in mm-hmm. been in fifth wheels mm-hmm. and gone to that camper. Because it's a lot of luxury. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. basically everything it they had in their fifth wheel. It is a lot of luxury. In, 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 a, a in a smaller fit. It's like mm-hmm. a tiny home. It's all here. Everything yeah. I need. Just yeah. It is kind of the tiny home concept because tiny homes, some of them are just really nice. Yeah. They have everything in them. Mm-hmm. They're just a smaller footprint. I think that's a trend a lot of us hit at some point in our life where we say, you know what? I'd like just less of everything. Less maintenance, less stuff, yes. less space, yes. less heat, less air conditioning. How do I do that? And a truck camper is kind of part of that. I mean, like you were saying, not everybody wants to hunt and fish and go skiing. Sometimes people just want less to maintain, Mm -hmm. um, less or less to to drive, less to turn around. You, I mean, U turns. Yes, so easy. We always say try that in a in a fifth wheel when we do a nice hard turn in a gas station, (laughs) right? Well, I have heard Gordon to just to be clear that that is what you always say. I might always say that it's true. Yeah. (laughs) So we is the general you. (laughs) Try that in a fifth wheel. Try that, (laughs) Angela. Look at him. Uh, we have to take a Cosmo break. No, 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 no. Him leave him. him. Leave him. He's Why okay. Why are licking your... Oh, he's, oh, just oh he's exploring all of our office. It's yes. very fun. We have he, a cat here. He is a cat. Cats and babies. Yeah. And puppies. Oh. We love them all. He is. So, so, yeah. So, you've got this luxury truck camper. You know, the other thing that we hear here, and I use we meaning all of you us. You also use here, here. We hear, here. Here, here. Here, here. We, here. Right. We hear at this location here, here, is, um, yeah, people saying, really? It costs that much? Yes. 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 But a luxury trailer costs that much, mm-hmm. but a luxury camper somehow. I can get five Jacos for that. Should be yes. half the price. <laughs> you should go get five <laughs> Because Jacos. it's smaller. Part of that is because there's only 3% of the buyers buying them, we don't have the larger companies necessarily making them in volume to bring that price down. Oh, And makes they're sense. not building as many, so they're not buying as many refrigerators, as many parts and pieces that mm-hmm. go into the camper to bring that price down. Mm-hmm. So some of it is just scale. Some of it's structure. A lot right? of it is structure. A lot of it is structure. You've got to have a lot of structure to have something that can sit in the back of a That's what I tell people. and take a lot of abuse. The engineering. Also on the assembly line, you you go to Northern Light or Lance, you have one, maybe two people in a camper at a time, but then you go to maybe Northwoods, uh, fifth fifth wheel and travel trailer lines, and you've got seven or eight people working on that one at the same time. So the labor to go into it is is much more. Yeah, um, it takes longer to build it. Much longer, which they have to pay for. If you put those four corner jacks on most travel trailers, put them in the corner, and you're going to see it crack in half. Mm -hmm. They need to be more structurally sound. Now, all of that is a tough pill to swallow, right? Like, I heard right. you, that all makes sense, and then I look at the price again. They are, I mean, that's part of the niche. I think that's part of the 3% issue. Um, they are more money. There has to be a compelling reason that this is the right answer to make mm-hmm. the additional investment. If you want to tow something, or if you don't want to tow something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, right. Yeah. Or if you really want to go off grid and stay there for 10 days and or, or is that if that's not a priority, then you shouldn't spend the additional money. You should get something a little less. Um, it doesn't need the versatility. Um, yeah. Tiny homes, tiny trailers. They're not inexpensive always. It's really yeah. about the build. It's about the quality. And like we said, even the biggest one with everything in it, they've got every single appliance and component that a big fifth wheel has, it's just less structure, and the structure isn't the expensive part. Mm -hmm. It's the building it, and it's all the components that go in it. Make sense? Am Am I on the right track? No, I mean, like I said, it goes back to what Angela was saying. I mean, having more people on the line gets them down the line faster and is more efficient. 
Um, they take less time to, to produce out the door. But uh, like the, the fact that there's only 3% of the market, I mean, it, it's an easy thing to overlook, but if you only buy one, there are companies like Alaskan, for example, that might only buy five or six refrigerators at a time. Palomino so will you, buy you don't get the, the volume right. discount price. It's a, it, well, it's, there's no Walmart and Costco effect for the manufacturer so it just rolls down to right. you know if we're going to stay viable as a business it just costs more it costs more mm-hmm. a lot more yep so what's the biggest question you get what's the best truck hamper what is the oh. best truck hamper oh. well could you Tell answer that for one. us now so what is hamper. the best truck the best truck hamper is the one we own so sorry guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we have an orphan. It's mine. We have poor orphan. No, we have an Alpine Light 1100. It's an orphan camper. Our company went out of business in 2008, 2009. Um, but to answer your question. Um, so why do you have that camper? Why uh, don't you? You have access to all the manufacturers and all that. I'm going to put you on the spot. I know the answer to this, like, but I know you don't want to answer it. I'm going to make you. <laughs> you want this or you want yeah. Okay. Somebody jump in there. There's Why two. don't you have the biggest, baddest, coolest thing? We do. Oh, mm. I see. No, but the truth is, um, there's two reasons. One, we needed a brand that nobody would think was uh, leading to bias in what we do. So if we had a Lance Camper or a Northern Light or an Arctic Fox, um, and we love all those brands and love different models in those brands, but we couldn't own that because the other companies would throw a fit. Um, and or we, we'd be covering it a lot more. So say we had a Lance, we'd be covering Lance every all outing. the time mm-hmm. because, hey, we're on the beach in Texas and there's a picture of our camper and it's always a Lance. And even if so, we were able to keep our bias in check, which we work very hard to do, Mm-hmm. Um, just owning that product and having that brand mm-hmm. on our truck, which colors provides. your experience, mm-hmm. right? So there's that facet, and then the other facet was when I first we first got in the truck camping. Um, our first camper was a Lance 1030, but before that, we were looking at all the different campers that were available. This is before Truck Camper Magazine, so just trying to figure out which brands existed was interesting. Mm-hmm. And I came across Alpenlight and immediately fell in love with that 1100 floor plan, having mm-hmm. never seen one in my life. So when we finally looked at getting our own camper, I said, that's, if we can find one, and we did, and it's it's for us, a non-slide, hard side, lots of storage. Dry bath. It's an 11 foot bath. floor, which is uh, one of the larger, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's length, it's the large length of a, and because truck campers are gauged by how long the floor is, not right. how long the entire trailer is, right. the entire camper. That's the short and sweet. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's more reasons, but we, we just. So did you choose you know. Alpine after they weren't a business anymore? Yes. Um, yes. And that was. For, for when we bought this one yeah. in 2014. But when people ask about the best camper, I, then you have to kind of go and narrow it down more. Like I could tell you the best camper for me, it would right. be a dry bath, non-slide um, camper. Uh, but then you go to someone else and they go, I, I have to have a slide, I need the room. Or uh, I don't want a bathroom, I, I want to get way off the grid and, and I can't take a camper that's really big. So maybe a pop-up's best for them. So when they asked me what the best camper is, you you kind of got to go, well, uh, let me let me ask you a few questions before I can answer that. I think what's really cool about that question is it, it points people in the right direction in that what you say mm-hmm. is if you're asking that question, you haven't you need there's some questions you need to ask, which we detail in the magazine in the uh, Discover Truck Camping section. But like Angela's saying, do you want to camp off road, off grid? Mm-hmm. Do you prefer a hard site or a pop up? And by answering all of these questions, there usually is a best truck camper for that individual, at least a brand or a, and a group set. Right. Yeah. Of, of that meet those requirements. But when you start to factor in price mm-hmm. and weight and what truck they want to own, it's actually surprising that it really becomes one, one or, or, or two other. models. One yeah. or the other. Interesting. Okay, so I, I want to put uh, a shameless plug in because you guys do a really great job in the magazine. Um, 
helping people narrow down trucks and truck fits. And and you are the best place for people to get all the newbie info if they're not familiar with truck campers. So, guys, if you uh, are tired of listening but you want to know where to look at all this info, you know, I just got to throw it out there. You never know when people say, oh, I've arrived at my destination. I'm turning off the radio now. Um then we'll be here when you get back. Yeah, we'll 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 pop up again when you turn your car back on. We're not <laughs> I hope anyway. We're here to say, we're, uh, we're like in your back seat. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon, Ooh, uh, that's a little creepy. But but just Google Truck Camper Magazine because it's truckcampermagazine dot com. Mm-hmm. You have a newbie section. Yes, and you have a find your truck kind of match your truck the whole home page of the magazine is geared towards newbies it's actually the home page it doesn't look like a magazine anymore and we did that on purpose it's the discover truck camping it's all to say if you're new to this this is what you need to do and the order you need to do it in our regular readers who are kind of following along they get our email newsletter there's a latest section at the top of the website there's a you know latest Mm -hmm. look at this um, so our regular readers who are kind of just going along, they they can go to that. So the homepage is, is for the people that get there the and, first time. And the reason for mm-hmm. that is when we started looking at truck campers, <laughs> there were so many questions we had for which we couldn't find answers. So the magazine is what we needed when we first got into it that we couldn't find. That's yeah. why there's a buyer's guide. That's why there's the kind of newbie corner information right off the bat. Yeah. That's why we talk about matching a truck and camper right away because we're trying to catch people before they do it. Multiple. Before they make a mistake and buy something that doesn't fit their truck. An expensive mm-hmm. mistake. Mistake. Right. Which happens a lot. Right. Yeah. Well, and I also think, you know, one of the coolest things in the magazine, which nothing is printed, guys. It is all digital. And it is free. all online and it's all free. <laughs> it's just Google it. And there it is. Yep. But the cool part to me is that you put the most interesting stories out in your newsletter. I see rigs that you were like, I mean, they're ones that roll through on your Instagram and you go what is that Mm -hmm. and it shows up in your emails and stories of people that do wild things funny how often we in this room like us three all three of us do it we'll be like oh my gosh did you see this article and we'll all like gather around one desk and be like oh that's crazy and then like the next week or the next month we'll gather around PJ's computer she's like come read this article I think that's we tend to do that a lot (laughs) there are so many people with truck campers have so many different interests we've talked about that already the skier the mountain biker it it just lends itself to interesting stories it does it does and people do wild things and they're all that many of them are engineer brains as i like to call them yes where they love to modify rig something and they will spend an umpteen amount of money and time making uh something that reminds me of that opening scene in back to the future where to feed the dog it goes all the way around the big warehouse and all these crazy things happen and then it dumps food in the bowl if you're listening i mean you're you're crazy you're a travel trailer owner or a tiny trailer owner um our modification section could be a real boon you could have all kinds of ideas you can do anything the truck campers have done in or most anything in a travel trailer those mods are universal that's what i was telling people at the storage ideas trailer rally oh yeah all sorts of things all kinds of stuff i I want my camper to to do this i want my lights to fade halfway Mm -hmm. when i go to sleep and then after 30 minutes i want them to go off when i'm asleep i mean i i just that's That's just a a weird mod (laughs) i've seen all kinds that's of weird very mods. specific. Yes, right? yeah, very it's very specific. It's like she's been thinking about it. Right. I remember seeing that. Uh, what is one of the weirdest or most Sounds interesting like you mods pie. you can think of that just come to mind? Because you have just some of the I think crazy one of the mods that comes right to mind was one we saw at your rally years ago where someone had a cage where the cat could go outside. The catio. Oh. I remember the catio. That thing was insane. Was the really side cool. of the camper folded out yep. and became an outside, like, ledge 
with a balcony covered like, screen on it. Yeah, the cat had a balcony. Exactly. It was so cool. Another one that I thought of right away was there was a guy who made his his kids were coming with him. Uh-huh. Uh, and they were homeschooling and their dinette table, he had like hinges on either side. And on, if you opened one side, it was a keyboard so they could play music. Oh, no. And then on the other side, it was art supplies and scissors and things so they could be crafty. And all they had to do was, you know, hinge it up and grab whatever they needed and then put it back down and color or draw or whatever wow. they were going to really do. Cool. Yeah. And that, I mean, that could be any RV could have like a table like that. We have so many table mods in our, in our That'd um, be cool. mod section. Well, the two things that people always say about any trailer, and I don't care if you've got a 33 foot fifth wheel or you've got a tiny truck camper, everybody says, I need more counter space and I need more storage. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of everybody mind. needs that. Yep. So uh, cool ideas in the magazine, just all kinds of neat stuff. Okay. Well, I I have one more thing that I just going to have to go to the way back on. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I think I'll make a truck camper magazine. Mm-hmm. I remember. I do. I, I do you I did oh, that just the other day yes and then you're like darn somebody's already done that oh ah, well <laughs> I do remember when I went home and I I remember telling Richard I I think I want a truck camper dealership and he said yeah those those aren't a thing yeah those words need to be reconsidered they, they aren't really a thing <laughs> um but they kind of are now yeah. They are a thing now. It's a thing now. Absolutely. So, it's a thing. Yeah. I, now. I made a thing. So how did you think about making a thing? Because you both had past lives. Mm-hmm. What were your past lives? I taught third and fourth grade elementary school and uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, when we moved from Maryland to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Gordon was like, Hey, you know, we're taking a year. Uh, why don't we take a year in between locations and get an RV and drive across the country? We had just gotten married and no cats, no cats, no kids. <laughs> and it was just like, let's let's take this opportunity and do it. And I knew Make I married the right girl because she said. Yes. Absolutely. Like Let's For the it. second time. Uh, yeah, and I, went, I went, really? Are you really? sure? Yeah. <laughs> well, on both times, actually. How did, you end up, how did you end up being able, I mean, I understand taking a year off of teaching, but yeah. how did you say, I just will take a year off? How, how does that work? He didn't exactly take a year off. Uh, I, I've always been um, a creative, so um, writing and um, publishing things. I had a newspaper in junior high. Um, I had another one in high that school. Guy. Yeah, I was that guy. And so it's just something I, and I can't explain why. I was the guy that walked around with a repeatograph pen and a notebook and was always drawing. I mean, that was just, I was a creative. Uh-huh. Um, but long story short, I ran a music magazine for six and a half years uh, called MX Music Guide in Washington, D.C. It was a guide to all the music stores and recording studios and live music venues. And it was great fun. I got access to everything going on in town. Mm-hmm. Got to meet some amazing people. Um, but Napster came out and iTunes came out. And that whole industry went on, on it, basically all my bigger clients, like Tower Records was a client. That gives you an idea of what happened to that business. Uh. And uh, so that all went under. And um, after that, I, I had a couple of different businesses that I ran. Um, I also worked for an advertising agency for a while, you know, worked on Volkswagen and McDonald's and Exxon Mobil, some pretty big accounts and learned a lot doing that. But at the time that Angela is talking about, I was, um, let's say, in between things. Okay. <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? And she married me unemployed without <laughs> a penny in my pocket. She had a. She I had knew a, one day you would come up with the most brilliant idea. I, I, I have and no, we would be on the road, just traveling around, meeting great people. Clearly not. Man, a right I just, mind. I just leap knew it. of faith. You just knew one day. Just knew it. You guys would get a cat. It was the face. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was this, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. You I just have, keep telling yourself it's that. It's the face for radio. Oh, God. 
<laughs> they see you. Uh, so anyway, uh, we, I was in between things. Um, and actually, the funny part was right about the time we got set on the trip, I was hired by a Florida real estate developer to write a book about communities, gated communities like in Florida. Like 55 plus communities in Florida. So here we are truck camping for the first time. And I'm writing this book about Florida lifestyle communities how to get into it, how does it work, What are the ta- what's the tax advantages to homesteading, all these weird little details, mm-hmm. but written for someone in New York or Boston or Chicago coming to Florida wants to buy a community home. And I said to Angela, where is this? For truck campers. For truck campers. And out of the blue one day I said, I'm gonna start Truck Camper Magazine. Well, she immediately laughed. I said, go for it. Right. I'm gonna go back to my third grader. Right. <laughs> but, Sounds like fun, Not See when I said, let's get married. Not when I said, hey, uh, let's go cross. But when I said, we're gonna, then she laughed. So that was okay. Yeah, well, But that know. cross country trip, when we decided to go on it, um, Gordon's like, what kind of RV should we get? We were going to dealerships, getting in campers, getting in trailers, getting in motorhomes. I said, Gordon, the one thing, I have to have is the ability to drive this thing. Yeah. I do not mm-hmm. want to feel like you you fall and break your leg and I can't get us to and a hospital. Stuck, yeah. And don't you hear that all the time? Yeah, I heard it twice at the rally. Mm-hmm. And I said, I also want to know how to do everything. I want to know how to change out the propane. I want to know how to dump the tanks. I want to know how to load it. And actually, when we load, I'm the one who loads she it. She loads the campers now, yep. But mm-hmm. he also is tall enough that when I'm backing it up, he can look right into the bed of the truck mm-hmm. and see everything, whereas mm-hmm. I'm too short. So it's like, okay, this works out perfectly. Always have a spotter. Sorry, I had to say that. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> we, we decided for that first trip, before the magazine even started, a truck camper was perfect for us. Plus, he looked at resale value. I mean, some of these truck campers now going used, yeah. they're, they're yeah. not doing bad. But That's we, right. We actually started the magazine mostly because we went on this amazing six month adventure. We got home, we sold the truck and camper because we couldn't afford to keep it. And then we just both started to vibrate. Like, really? how can this gotta not, get back on the road? This we can't can... be a most amazing year of our life. And now it's over. Done. Like it just, so I said to Angela, I'm going to figure out a way to get us back into this come heck or high water. And truck and camper magazine idea. And came we're like, back maybe to this, that. this, just go. And then I went online and saw that truckingupermagazine.com was $9.99. And Aww. that was it. And right I thought, then. you have to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, and that's that's the short. The long story is a lot of fun. It, and it's in the About Us section. If you called, scroll all the way to the bottom of the website, About Us is there. And it's called The Never Before Told Story, 10 Years of Truck Camper Magazine. Even if you don't care about truck campers, and I don't normally say this about something I've written because it sounds wrong, but that's a good story. That's a fun <laughs> okay. article. And it's better than, oh, that's what happened after you decided this to is, do truck well, camper So everything I, we just said is in there with a mm-hmm. little bit more detail. Yeah, me being a teacher. Yeah. And, and how we got through the recession and what happened in the recession and just the, the, the story. Gordon's car accident in Louisville one year. I mean, it's just talks about all the challenges you don't realize what's you get your email twice a week hey check out this new but you don't realize all the other stuff that goes into like Starting running a business, business from scratch right yeah. yeah so if you just want a fun entrepreneurial like how did this business start mm-hmm. it's not what people it's fun to have people read it and say talk to me tomorrow and tell me what yeah. you think and it's like oh my gosh that was crazy I said yeah crazier than I would have enjoyed but that's really what happened <laughs> well yeah and you started right before the 2008-2009 crash yeah it's crazy yeah. we went to some of the manufacturers in 2007 because we visit the factories a lot and some of the factories we went to in 2007 and 2008 didn't exist yeah and I remember I calling before. you and saying, hey, guys, I think what you're doing is great, but I can't pay you. Yeah, we um, I called every this is I don't even know. I think this is actually in the article that I was referring to. I called every manufacturer and the president of the company or whoever was a decision maker. And it was very clear at that point that we were all on something. Something had changed and things were going, companies were going out of business by right? the day. They were. And I told every single one, I said, I'm going to publish until the last company goes out of business, if that happens. And pay me when you can. Because we were just like, we, we wanted you. to be part of the team. I wanted to we be wanted part to of the solution. We wanted to help everybody out. Yeah. We wanted to make sure everybody survived that could survive. Yep. Um, 
and everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people just just kept doing it and and they got through it. I mean, Mm -hmm. we all just kept swinging because we kept helping each other. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know you and I had that conversation. No, absolutely. And and it was. And unfortunately, I had that conversation with a lot of people. (laughs) I mean, well, that was none of us could sell anything. So people forget the depth of that moment. Um, It's in the article. I describe how everything led to that. It's yeah, it was was crazy. It was. It was. So that's not fun. We survived right. that. Great yes. question, PJ. I know. <laughs> very cool. I mean, I don't know. I always think it's curious to hear how people come up with an idea and then actually launch it. Yeah. But I mean, your content out there is just crazy fun, crazy organized. Thank you. It is. Well, that's Angela. Awesome. <laughs> You're a team. Yes. I can always tell. Yeah. But, you know, the article on the uh, poop bugs, oh. Oh, the Black dung beetles. beetles, tank beetles, the tank beetles, Black tank beetles. Yes. Yeah, that was not Angela. I wrote that in about 45 minutes and I have no idea I why see, people I loved it so much. I can see how that right? one, that one, just, the spark and it just, yes. just went. Right. Yeah, and, just and, I, went. and of course, Brilliant. I write those sort of things every once in a while and I show Angela and she goes, you can't publish that there have been so many things i've taken out but see that's just not gonna happen. i liked it so much because it reminded me of clint that's it was something that clint would write totally and something the that sort of thing I would he would with. show us and pj and i would be like no uh, that is so dumb anyone but. who's listening to this podcast i'm sorry you're missing out on the great podcast i could make yeah right, <laughs> right. Yeah. But when they don't allow me to when, when you just <laughs> let him go and let him like run free and do whatever he wants it's just that's what fun. april it's 1st funny. is Four. Mm-hmm. That's Gordon why. Gordon keeps the list all year long. What can Love I? It. What can I do for one April day? Or I can just go a little. Yeah. Sideways. So April first, where did that go? Was it on Facebook? In our email. In your email. Yeah, but, but it got. I mean, I saw it on Facebook too. But I mean, you didn't it do it, it this year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did yeah. it this year. Okay. Yeah, Chuck Camper the, magazine. We got the email like two days before. Well, because April it didn't 1st. fall on a Friday. Yeah. So. so then, then we were super confused. So then PJ was like, "We need to share it to our Facebook," and I was like. But it's not April Fool's. I feel wrong doing that. I can't <laughs> do that. Yeah. So the day before, I'm, yeah. I'm a little Look bit at rain up, man folks. about Black Tuesday, Tank Beatles. Friday. You know, yeah. like, I know we, we publish like, on Tuesday and Friday. We yeah. can publish on a Wednesday. But no, we, we publish on Tuesday no, and no, Friday. No, it's like Wapner, right? now. we publish Friday. <laughs> <laughs> we publish Friday. <laughs> PJ, this is this is way off topic, but for our listeners and maybe more so for our viewers, mm-hmm. you're going to have to describe what's in your cup because they can see it on the video, it and you're going to you need to describe oh. it. Otherwise, <laughs> people. It are, and I noticed I was drinking this way, yeah. so everybody was going to see this huge cup. But I was trying to be nice. I our should, poor viewers are going to be like, "What is that swill? What, what okay. is that swill? Oh, it's mud water." No, it's not. We have been <laughs> we have been at two weekend rallies in a row. We got back. We stayed up till midnight talking, uh, Gordon and Angela and I. And these rallies start on Thursday. We did one, came home on Sunday night, went back Thursday morning, did it again. These are all day. All this is coming rallies. to what's in the cup, I promise. Yeah, wait, so, what's in the cup? <laughs> so I have not Jeez. eaten enough. And this morning I started to like feel like I was going to faint. Yeah. So I went in. We have not put food in our kitchen here for us to eat. There is no restaurant next door. There is no vending machine. But there is a big bottle of protein shake meal replacements. That's what I'm saying. So that's what is in this cup so I can do a podcast. There you go. It just looks really awful on the outside of it. For our listeners and and more so so for our viewers, there you go. If that has been bothering you because I I looked up (laughs) at our monitor and I thought, oh no. That's what that is. (laughs) It does not look good. PJ PJ is dipping snuff again. It is my breakfast (laughs) because I have not been eating enough because I've been busy Yes. Yeah. The rally was awesome. Thank you so much it for was so putting much it on. We got to see some <sighs> yep. old friends and yep. meet new ones. And I mean, the, the dancing was so mm. much fun. It and was the fun. Barbecues. You got some content as well. What are you going to produce for the magazine? 
we, we did a video that we've actually done before. We did it at the Gettysburg Rally about five years ago called Why Do You Love Truck Camping? And mm -hmm. what we did was, it's very simple. We bring everyone out of their camper and put them in front of their rig and just ask them that question. Mm -hmm. People don't like being on camera. I mean, it's just, a, it's true. They just don't. So, ask yourself. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but if you ask them something they're passionate about and you limit it to that, they're usually mm -hmm. pretty good sports about it. So what the video is going to be um, is just a series of couples and their rigs talking about what we've been talking about. Yeah. Why, why do, do they do it? This? Why do you love this? Why this? What mm -hmm. keeps you going out on the road? And, and why'd you get a truck hamper? Right. Right. I'm anxious to hear their answers because mm -hmm. I, you know, I now know, you know, 50 more truck camper couples than I did before. And I'd be interested to hear what they say. It's also fun for those of us who attended because then you'll go back and look at it. Oh, I remember them. Or, yeah. Oh, they or, were so nice. So yeah, that's the. Yes. Did you, was it crazy how many pilots we had at yeah. this rally? I think four or five people were pilots. I think it's crazy how many cats we had at this rally. <gasps> I feel like there was almost as many cats in truck campers as there was dogs. No? Yeah, I, I remember a I lot of cats. Four people who had cats in their truck camper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who would do that? That's very strange. Isn't it? I don't know. And then that I one just had a sign up that said, beware, attack cat. Mm. And, and there's this cat's name was Cosmo, staring. too. There yes. Was a, we didn't meet that. Cat. And the cat would just like stare at the screen door with the sign right below him that says attack cat. Love it. And we had two <laughs> dogs parked next to each other with the same name. They were both named Chloe. Oh, not Bella. There's a Who little names your dog Chloe, first of all? And then there's two of them next to each yeah. other Apparently at the Truck Camper people, Rally. Yeah. So what was your favorite part of the Truck Camper Rally? Because we had four days of just nonstop. That's easy for me, but go first. Well, then, uh -huh. for you, we do all kinds of things. There's quiet, there's fun, there's dancing, there's live music, because it's Austin area. But I just love talking with people. I just find fellow truck campers to be so wonderful, mm -hmm. just connecting with their stories and hearing. Um, I mean, actually, the, my favorite part, I shouldn't say this, but I will. I love when they don't know about the magazine and they just talk to us. Uh -huh. Telling us about their adventures, and we're just because sharing then we're it. just like regular people they're talking to who went yeah. to the rally. We're not. You get to be incognito, and then they find out about the magazine, and then it's all about that. And I understand that, but it's just fun to be part of the tribe for I a little while. Totally get that because yes. there are people who don't know who I am, mm -hmm. and I Very just few. love are you that. Sure? Yeah, yeah, there are, <laughs> right. and it's really fun to chat with them. And they're like, "Oh, well, what are you traveling in?" And I'm like. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but but it is fun because you just get to be part of the gang and and, you know, everybody is so different. We had some very uh, financially well off people at this rally mm -hmm. and we had people who uh, maybe aren't in that category. We had people who had little farms. We had people who were school teachers. We had people. I, I mean, just people that you just would never know for any other reason, sit down and you can sit at a campfire for two hours, have the best conversation. And that's the beauty of, yeah. of these rallies. You find the whole spectrum of people, personalities, oh, yeah. background, socioeconomic yeah. levels, and they come together and you're camping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's just long. Everybody gets it, along. It's just really great. What about you? What was your favorite part? Uh, definitely the people and talking to people, finding out where they went and where they want to go and just learning about their lives and getting destination ideas from them, putting them on my map yeah. and going, we've got to go there. And Oh, you know, man, that destination chat that we had. We had a time where we set up like two hours for people to come in and talk about their favorite destinations. We could have been there like all day. Yes. They, they could cater food and we would have sat there for five hours. Yeah, it was crazy. I learned about places. I know. I know cool we, places to go we've been to Utah four or five times. And Jim and Jeanette brought up Flaming Gorge. I didn't even know it existed because we typically stay south of 70 and go to Zion and Canyonlands and, and Arches. But Flaming Gorge is like at the top of Utah, almost near Wyoming. 
and they showed me pictures and it's pinned on my map and will probably go at some point this summer. So, Perfect. So that kind of stuff is like mm-hmm. awesome. And you also get to see other people's rigs. Say somebody with 511 72s there. So they walk into each other's. Where do you put this? Where do you put that? And oh, that's a great idea. I never thought about yeah. that. Yeah. So it, it's just kind of cool to meet people uh, and and then just keep, establish those relationships after the rally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get a lot of people's cell phone numbers. I'm sure we'll keep in touch, email. Um, uh-huh. So then you just have friends or you find somebody in your town. You didn't even, oh, you're in that town. I'm in this town. We're only 10 minutes apart. And then you're hanging yeah. out after the rally. Yeah. Uh, just for fun. There were a couple of people that I know kind of made friends and they were like, oh, yeah, we're going over to their place for a day or two on our way home. And I'm like, that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. New friends to camp with. Yeah. And one thing with truck campers is you'll be driving around. Um, in a town and you'll see a truck camper person right. and oh, I mean, a, the whole world that's stops a big deal. Yeah, it's you like a are, you just ran into a three percenter yeah yeah it's <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah, keep bringing this up he <laughs> will never Remind forget to to three later. percent again <laughs> feel, I, I like my issues don't take my issues away from me well <laughs> Um, and I just have to say, Lindsay no, runs our rally. So yes, I know. She always does this. I'll but say it. Good yeah, job. Thank you. Good yes. job. Yes. And we didn't know. I, I mean, all the cool stuff. She finds us a great band. We learned a two-step. And, you know, how many times have you heard people say, I haven't danced in 20 years. Yeah. This is so fun. Yes. Yeah. Or, I don't dance. And then they're out there. That's me. Because we give them a dancing, nudge. Right? Yeah. And then they're it's like, all good. this is so fun. That, I was moving and the music was playing. And he pretended he was too. My boss makes me. Yeah. And it's all <laughs> good. just kept grabbing you, Gordon. It was cracking me up to look on your face. You were like. Like, I know I have to. It's but hard to hide when you're six three, but I was trying. Right. You were trying right. really hard to hide, and it wasn't working. I'm like, I'm we had shadow. a great How band. Can you see me? <laughs> Both rallies have had great bands that come out and play for us, and I mean, a lot of people don't go see live bands anymore because you don't want to be in some crowded bar. I mean, it's just like you don't yeah. fit that scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But live music is really fun. We have campfires late at night. You just go drag a chair to someone's campfire. You know, we had no. trivia night that, that was okay? fun. He's fine. Okay, there's Ooh. nothing in that closet. Cat, Cat in the closet. Dark closet. Dark so anyway, it was Good. it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And it was the Merrills, right? The band? The Merrills. Merrills. Like, like Merrills. Haggard. Mm-hmm. The Merrills. And they before were, that, it was they Bob were, Apple really at the other rally that we had. Yes. So if you're in Austin or around Austin, check out the Merrills and Bob Apple. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm kind of sad rally our rally time is over. That's okay. But give you've give it like four months and we'll get another one. <laughs> next year, right? Oh, when, what are the dates next year? The truck camper rally next year is April Gen- 25th. April 25th. April 25th. I remember that because day after my well, I was going to get there. I just had Ooh, to I was helping think you. of what month. I was going to say July. When is the tiny trailer rally? Oh, stop. I Do you don't no know? Yeah. <laughs> that was last week. Is it week. before or after? It's the weekend after the total eclipse. And one of the best places to see it is where we're going to have the rally next ah, spring. Come mm-hmm. to Texas. Yes. And, do both. and you can do both because they have a four day special. We'll, we'll be advertising this later, but they're going to have a special where you can be at this campsite. You have to do four days um, because there's going to be tons of people in yeah. Kerrville mm-hmm. because it is a dark sky spot with lots of camping. So yeah. um, Bandera is going to be a great place to be. But the next tiny trailer rally isn't next year. It's in the it's middle. In October, mm. which is during and it's during the 12th through 15th. Yeah, but it's during the it's other eclipse. The, the partial lunar eclipse. eclipse. Oh. eclipse. Oh, it seems the to be partial amazing. eclipse of the heart. Yes. That's total. Oh. That's a total, total, not a partial. In the fall? But that oh, one's in my the heart. fall, and oh. it's in Bandera as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just go on to Princess Craft, and there's a little tab that says rallies. <laughs> Check yes. it out. We will update it. Give us a week. I was about to say, it's not we updated. To, Please don't go We there. have to sleep for a little while, and then we will update it. Yeah, we need to catch up on our sleep. I don't know. I'm ready to go truck camping. Yes. I'm ready to jump in and go. Where are you guys heading from here? We are going to Capri Camper in Bluffdale, Texas, uh-huh. which mm-hmm. is up toward uh, Fort Worth. And then we're going west to the Overland Expo West. 
uh, which is happening in Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, next weekend. Not That'll this be weekend. Fun. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of uh, overland vehicles, uh, truck campers, a lot of pop ups go yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to explore Utah a little bit. Probably hit that Flaming Gorge that we heard about. There you go. And then uh, then we'll go up into the West and see some of the manufacturers, hopefully. Um, I think one thing I want to add right there is we do go to a lot of industry-related things for the magazine. But we really love truck camping. This is not an act. Like, we definitely get in that camper and feel at home. And go do all the things, a lot of the things our readers write about, the, the hikes and the trails and the exploration and the, it just, we just love this stuff. It, and that helps so much with mm-hmm. what we do and the writing. And when I talk to people who are fellow truck campers or, or getting into it. We can relate. I can, I can connect to their energy very naturally. It's just something, um, I don't know, I don't have to, when I'm writing about it, hopefully you can feel it in the writing. Like I really enjoy what we're doing. So that's the biggest gift of all of this, other than meeting you guys and everybody else involved in the industry, which of course is definitely the best part, so. Well, you know, Gordon, I can relate. Oops. Your phone is so loud, PJ. It is. So loud. Greg. So it was Greg. <laughs> Greg. Yeah, Greg is he's calling our, me. He's our disaster. So he's the you know worst. what? I I can relate to that because, you know, when we started with Princess Craft and uh, Princess Craft started in 1968. The reason we have this crazy name is because that was the brand of truck camper and camper shell that was made by the company. That was what we did. So I didn't come to truck camping because I thought, hey, I'll try this. We ended up with this company that we thought was making money when it really wasn't. Um, It's kind of that movie Money Pit, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, but this Princess Craft was our brand and we competed with Capri for rodeo campers, the -hmm. the basic build. And that's why we have the name Princess Craft. And I realized early on that the truck camper people were so nice. Mm -hmm. They were just so nice. And all the other things I sold, you know, the, the cargo trailers, the horse trailers, the the grill guards, we did truck mods, we did all kinds of things. They weren't that nice. They just wanted a transaction. I still, one of my first truck camper company, uh, truck camper customers who ended up buying an Alpenlight from us, um, is actually in my my business group now and he owns a campground and he owns a dealership and I ran into him 20 years later hadn't seen him for 20 years in my business group because he said yeah we bought that from you years ago and we were hooked and it is kind of that feeling that's just different when you have a truck camper mm-hmm. you feel very free very mobile and it's it's an amazing Lifestyle. Go so anywhere. there's my two cents. It's the go anywhere, camping, or tow anything, and extends much further beyond just off grid. But mean, there is a freeing, freeing feeling about yes. it. I remember the first time, um, I well, the first time I drove the truck, I had a Honda Civic, and we went to go pick up this big dually truck. And Gordon's like, "Do you want to drive home, or or should I?" I'm like, "I'm driving this beast." And I'm on the highway going 55 miles an hour and I'm watching these doolies and they're right up against mm-hmm. the lines. And yeah. you're like, oh am I in the gosh. lane or not? I can't tell. And then we load the camper on and um, and that was very interesting the first time loading a it's camper. Al- it's always interesting for every single human. Well, there's a lot of yelling and screaming and I can't do this. I can't do this. Which, by the way, is normal. That's, yeah. that's the process. That is, that is the learning that's process. Like a kid falling off a bike. Yes, that's part of the process. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Right? You skin your knee and you get back on. Driving out that first trip and we, we left Pennsylvania and we're going towards Chicago. We're somewhere in western Pennsylvania and I'm like, we're doing this. I can't believe we're doing this. And it, it was just the, it, it was the most freeing feeling in the world to know, I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I don't know what I'm gonna see. I don't know what's out there. I'd never been to Yellowstone before. Like I knew all of this was about to happen and I could just enjoy mm-hmm. it. Uh-huh. And it, it was just this feeling of, 
yay <laughs> like uh-huh. so much fun and that, that feeling is really what we're after in the end it's not the boxes in the back of the pickup trucks or what they have in them or where you're it's that feeling of adventure and discovery and connecting and meeting new people and having them say have you ever no let's try that i mean just the the road mm-hmm. magic it just yes well that's a whole another topic for another day but road magic is real it happens yep. things happen on the road that you can't explain that become part of your life in a very meaningful way. The people you mm-hmm. meet or a place you just stumble across, you never knew existed, and all of a sudden you drive and you make a left-hand turn and you go down this dirt road and you're in this beautiful canyon and you just camp there. And then you meet someone yeah. down the hike that, that you can't believe you never, like, how did I never know this person? And uh-huh. they share their story or they know someone from your hometown and you're going, this is just too many uh, yeah. weird it happens all the time on the road, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're looking, if your antenna is up, it definitely happens. And that's time. what makes me so excited for this summer. You know, we're just starting going out for this summer. Uh-huh. And I know ahead of us is the Overland Expo and going through Utah and Idaho and Washington. I'm like, just, I don't even know what's going to happen this summer, but it's going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. The next adventure. Yeah. Well, so. you know what? It, if we haven't uh, convinced people to at least consider a truck camper, if they're trying to figure out what might work for them, then uh, hopefully they'll jump over to Truck Camper Magazine and see some of the great work that you guys do. Because I, I don't know, I, I, I love reading Truck Camper Magazine and Thank seeing you. what creative things you guys put out every week. You so, never know it's going to pop yeah, up in your email It box. is kind, kind of like, what did you call it? Road magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, what is that? Uh-huh. Oh, really? Wow. And, you know, I've been doing this 27 years. It takes a lot to wow me. Mm. And you guys do it every now and then. I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate you hanging out with us it's been fun it really is it's good and princess craft has come a long way since we were last here you guys are yeah. really it's amazing the new you've lot you've got an amazing dealership and it's so well Aww. run and it's organized and you come in and you feel welcome the and the team is really together and nice and just it's just great to see it's so fun. many well, truck campers so means, many new things means a lot coming from you guys mm-hmm. I'm you see a lot of dealerships but that's how every dealership should be, right? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now that we uh, we have all had virtual hugs, <laughs> Clint. Sure, I'm can on. You, can you get us out of here? I hope so. Here, I'll just push the button. Just kidding. Everyone, <laughs> check us out on uh, rvsmalltalk.com. If you want to check out the show notes for this episode or any other episode we've ever done, or if you're listening to this in the future, future people, you can check out future episodes there, how, too. How often do you do um, podcasts? Uh, we try to go for about once a week. Every now and then our schedule gets busy, but about once a week, you Is should see some constant kind of, day people should look out for? We like to release on Thursday evenings. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is because I'm weird. Um, but also... You're it, always 3% it, weird. Just uh, I'm always 3% yeah. <laughs> weird. But you know what? I will, I will grow that number. We'll do that together. But you know what? People can mm-hmm. actually go into their podcast player and subscribe. Yes. And then whenever we put it out, it's going to pop up and just notify you there's a new episode. Sure. Cool. Okay. I don't understand why everybody doesn't do that. But... They don't. So go to your podcast player of choice and we... Uh, what are podcast players? So it could be <laughs> iTunes <laughs> or, or Apple Podcasts now. Spotify. It could be Spotify, Stitcher. Google has a podcast right. thing, mm-hmm. but... Uh, I, I heard thing. radio. We're not on podcast, but I'm going to sign up after this. But do, sure. you spo- do, you, do you use Spotify? No, I don't. What? So lots of options out there First and you all, can subscribe you Spotify. to it as you would subscribe to any any service. And as a new episode comes out, you'll either be notified or it'll automatically download and play next time. And then it's just sitting there waiting for you. But it's great for like when you're doing those cross country trips mm-hmm. and yeah. you just want to listen to something. Yeah. You don't want to listen to, you know, 80s on 8 when they're playing right. the same song over like and over yeah. again. Sure. We love it. But, <laughs> <laughs> how many times can we hear we built this city? No, wait. We've been I, this no, no, I can listen it's to that a lot. <laughs> so, so the nice thing is, if you're a audiobook kind of person at all, then podcasts actually work for you really well too. And it's a, it's a, it's just such a different format in the sense that it's 
it's live. It's a bunch of friends talking on microphones and you don't know where the conversation is going to go. So there are people listening right now live. No, no. but it's going to feel like that. This converse, conversation, just the way we had it, is going to, as a podcast listener, you feel like you're at the table. You feel and like pretty you're much the phones come with podcast players sure. on them. There's a, there's a podcast player on your phone. Somewhere. You have an Apple, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so you have Apple, Apple podcasts. podcasts already on your phone. And speaking of Apple Podcasts, if you listen to RV Small Talk on Apple Podcasts, that's pretty much the biggest podcast player that allows ratings and reviews. And guess what ratings and reviews do? They boost up. They help us become discoverable to everybody else. So if you listen on Apple Podcasts, please make sure to rate and review. And five stars would be really nice. But if you don't like the podcast, uh, maybe you just skip it. Actually, you know, we we (laughs) mostly have five stars except for that one person who says we cut each other off. And we're just trying to be funny. Really? Yeah. 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 We all talk over each other all the time. We all talk at the same time. Try to be funny. Yeah. (laughs) I love that review. It makes me so happy. (laughs) No. Everybody, thank you so much. Gordon, Angela, thank you so much for joining us, for coming in. uh, And and you'll hear your own episode in a few days. Well, you're going to help me get it on. She's just going to have to figure out how to get to the podcast. That's right. Lindsay will help me get it on my phone right now. It starts with P for podcast. Okay. And show me how to do it. I don't know how to work apples. You need to and if, if, if anybody out there needs to figure out how to get Apple Podcast or another podcast player on their phone and subscribe, you call Princess Craft. Ask for Lindsay. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm going to give out Clint's cell phone number. Ooh, hey. <laughs> I'm sure YouTube has a couple of videos. How to get yes. A we'll on all your take your calls. Why not? We Come are on, on. YouTube. Look us fun? up at, at RV Small Talk Podcast on YouTube. And we're on hey. social media. Look us up at RV Small Talk Podcast on social media. They could look at us on Facebook. We have a community group for RV Small Talk. Yeah. You and they talk that. to each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say if they need... I'm out. (laughs) Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.